I am full of food, quite like Kirby usually is. Hello, anybody, and welcome back to Let's Play Kirby 64 The Crystal Shards. I'm Mr. Debius, or just Deeb, and in the last episode, we finished up Rockstar and started on Aquastar, and in today's episode, we're gonna be jumping right in. So let's go. So, even though Aquastar, also I changed the format you might have seen below, like I changed the menu style, I'm gonna be showing them all off for this game because they're cute and silly, and even though that one is a little too busy for my liking, I'm gonna show them all off, like the little format down at the bottom. Anywho, let's get going. So, Aquastar, as has already been said, is a water themed planet, that's the theme of these levels. But the last level we did was kind of like seaside themed, and what I like about this level is that it's, an, it's a river in a forest, and that's not normally what you would associate with a water-themed world. That's more of a forest-themed world with a forest with the river kind of as an ancillary thing. And either I'm forgetting my knowledge of video games here, but I don't can't think of this being a particular particularly common trope in games, a uh, river forest, at least not in platformers. I know RPGs do them basically like all the time, or at least it's a common setting. And we run across this path and it falls behind us, but you actually don't need to, whoa. And you can just kind of walk at a leisurely pace here if you want, but I'm gonna run because Kirby's life is at risk. This penguin has no hope. He looks panicky and scared, but I digress. We're not gonna be showing off a new power-up just yet because we need Volcano, and the reason we need Volcano is in this room right here. Now, even though I showed off Volcano in an earlier episode, we can see here, here again what it does. Unfortunately, it can't shoot through platforms that are, well, well, that you can pass through through the underside. However, they do do damage to anything that's standing here, and that's how you kill that mini-boss. I don't really feel bad killing these mini-bosses quickly, because, well, they don't really do anything aside from what their normal enemy counterpart type does. But anyway, that's what we needed Volcano for, was to blow open that, that, um, that passage, and that's great. Now we run along the river a little more, and our friend Waddle Dee is waiting for us, and I love this section. Waddle Dee, even though he kind of helps you in kind of meaningless ways early on, starting with Aquastar in this level, he starts to do really fun things, and this is probably one of my favorite sections in the game, it's just these guys hanging out on a raft down a river, and by raft I mean a box, it's just a cardboard box, this is just funny. The way they flail their arms in the air with the greatest of ease as they're going down river. It's cute and it's fun. I like this section. However, you saw that we got a crystal shard back there. Uh, thing is, if you miss a crystal shard, that crystal shard in this section, you have to do the whole level over again. Or die and redo this section, whatever is easiest. This is a pretty easy section though, you just gotta jump when you're about to hit something, and I think you're actually invincible against enemies even though I've been jumping over them. And they flail their arms, and... That time they fell a little too far, <laughs> and Waddle Dee is dead. We hardly knew ye. I'm gonna get rid of this because we've already shown off Volcano. And now we're getting to show off Candy. I think we've shown off Candy before, but now we're really seeing it. Actually, I don't know if this is the first time or not. As you can see, when you're invincible, you move faster, you kill enemies, you touch, and it's just generally awesome. You're all sparkly and shiny, and it actually doesn't use the same invincibility theme common in other Kirby games, so that's a thing. It makes its own theme. Usually the Kirby theme is like, da -da 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 -da. I'm not gonna imitate it, even though I just did, but it uses a different theme as the, the thesis of my essay on Kirby invincibility. Now, you think that might be the end of the level there, but no, now we're heading up the river. Before we were going down river, but now we're heading up the river, and there are giant spiked logs on the river that are just there, because why not? Actually, I'm really curious how those got there. This doesn't seem to be a world where there would be woodcutters. I don't understand your logic, Kirby world. Who are the lumberjacks? Probably the cutters. Or, you know, maybe just spiky logs are a natural formation. You don't know. Anyway, we're gonna avoid this, avoid this, and we are gonna get ourselves a new power-up. Fire plus cutter gives us a fire sword. This is awesome. Even though this isn't really the best level to show it off, um, because we're heading uphill, and I might have to show it off later to get an appropriate view, and this isn't a very good uh, ability for mobility. You hold it above your head, you can also 
sweep it around like that when you're holding it like that, but when you hold it over your head, you can then throw the blade forward, which again is kind of useless and wasted in this section. I'm sorry, this was not the best place to show it off. So I'm just gonna get set on fire as punishment. Yeah, that works. However, there we go. It does make a very useful projectile, and it is good in other situations that aren't you going uphill. Going downhill is also fairly not great, because then your blade just kind of soars over everything, but in horizontal levels, it is a magnificent ability. And you know, Kirby pulls a fire sword out of his mouth, that's, that's great. And he just kind of looks silly walking with that thing. But we made it to the top of the river, so now it's time to celebrate with pudding and cards, and actually there's no pudding there. We're gonna get ourselves a card. So that brings up level two and finishes it off. Let's move on to the next level, which is back to the more traditional level, traditional aqua level on land, which is, as you can see, a beach. I like beaches, not in real life. I hate beaches in real life. I like them in video games. I like the atmosphere of them. In real life, beaches are just sandy and annoying, and I don't like them very much, and meh. They're overrated, if you ask me. And then there's cigarette butts everywhere, and you might step in broken glass, and it's not great. But now we can finally eat one of these maraca guys, and we don't get maraca powers, so that's kind of a shame. Actually, those enemies that pop out of the ground do have actually have a bit of camouflage in this level, because they blend in with the color of the ground, and that's a cool little combination. I like enemies in games that kind of use stealth to their advantage, because they're uncommon, and they kind of force you to, they make you be a little more observant. How about that water sparkling effect up in the background, the, just the, the snow effect, and you can kind of see the anti-aliasing in the edge of the, on the horizon, oh that doesn't look so great. Yeah, don't look at that too long. Level has great atmosphere otherwise. Actually, I don't know if we have the abilities we need to get one of the crystal shards that I want right away in this level, and that's problematic. In fact, just to be... Oh, wait, there, there's one of them. One of the first abilities we're going to need is Cutter. Cutter is very important in this level. There are two crystal shards in this level that you need, and both of them require that you have Cutter. Now, so far, and in Aquastar, as far as I'm aware, you can get all of the crystal shards with power-ups that you get before the blocks that you need to destroy, if that makes sense. So the power-ups you need to get the crystal shards are available in the levels in questions, and that's what we need to get our power up. Not this fish, this fish can go die. What we need is that fish. That fish is a bomb, and bombs and blades makes for my, probably my favorite weapon in the game, exploding shurikens, or rather exploding throwing stars. Either way, this is an awesome item. It's fast, it's efficient, we're gonna be showing it off even more. You throw it, it nearly immediately hits what's in the distance, it freezes it, it's cool, it's effective, it's a good projectile so it keeps you safe at, at a distance, it's fast, it, there's just, it's simplistic, it's beautifully simplistic and effective, it's hilarious for one thing, how you just walk up to an enemy and boom, you just shove a star in its face and then it explodes and there's just, just a moment of terrified realization and this is, it's a great power up and I like it a lot and we're going to be using it for as long as I can, but I digress. You throw it at that wall, it explodes, and we get ourselves a crystal shard, as per usual. You also get a tomato and eat it, and then you gotta stand on that rock to get out of here. Of course, and like video game logic, that is much bigger on the inside than it is on the outside. And also I think it's one of the few areas in the game that's like one of the first optional areas in the game. Like I can't think of a room before this where we had the option to go in but didn't have to in order to progress in the level. And also, yes, I had to throw away the power-up because I do need a rock here. And King DDD is waiting for us. And for some reason we had to do that. I'm not sure why. It's a very, very meaningless contribution to the level, but you know, it's just kind of a cute little thing. He doesn't really add a whole lot aside from just personality to the scene. So what we need here is to combine our rock with one of these dudes. And this is the first level in the game that requires uh, two power-ups, two separate power-ups to get. Both of them involve Cutter, but the one we're getting is 
rock and cutter. Now what do we know about blades and rocks? Are we gonna make a rock made of stone? No, we're gonna be cutting apart the rock and getting this. This is stone cutter Kirby, I guess, but this is Who the Owl from Kirby's Dreamland 3 and 2, and basically what this power does is it cuts you into a statue in the form of one of Kirby's animal friends from Kirby's Dreamlands 2 and 3. There are six in total that you can get, but we actually need one of them. This, we actually need one of them to get the Crystal Shard, and this one does nothing. This is kind of fish. In Kirby's Dreamland 2 and 3, he was useful in underwater sections, but otherwise he was the most useless uh, animal buddy. And in this game, he can't even swim underwater, which makes sense, but he's, he's deliberately useless. He can't move. He can't do anything. This is Rick the Hamster. He can climb up walls, and he is the one we need, because as you may have saw as we fell down here, that crystal shard at the top is just... Okay, so we have to kind of be curvy to get up here, but... Can't move. Rick the Hamster is the only one who can get up that high because of climbing the walls. Even Kirby's puffing ability, where he can't puff himself up that high before he gets tired. You can mash as fast as you want, but you just aren't making it. This was actually the hardest one for me to get in the game, because I didn't realize the first time I played that Rick the Hamster could climb walls. So this was probably the last crystal shard I got, just because this was the hardest one to figure out for me. It's not intuitive, if you ask me, that Rick the Hamster statue can climb walls. Like, yeah, you need rock and stone, I mean, rock and cutter to get into this area by getting through that wall. So that's your hint that you need one of the animal buddies to get this crystal shard, but even then, it's a little esoteric, and I don't really like that one all that much. Also, most of your animal buddy transformations are useless. I mean, they all have their abilities. Uh, I think uh, who the owl, he can fly higher and, but, and stay in the air longer, like has more jumps, but I don't know. So we jump on these, and that does that. Time the fish does nothing. I'm just gonna go through this section without getting myself murdered, and then show off the cutter abilities in the next area, because the cutter stone ability is just not useful in this section, particularly because you, there are no enemies to fight. They're just these rocks that if they hit you, it, oh. You will get squished and then pushed around and take a lot of damage. These things do a ton of damage, and they're a real threat. This is Choo Choo, I think? Not Kirby's girlfriend, but they kind of... She was in Kirby's Dreamland 3. She sat on Kirby's head. She can jump higher than Kirby can, but it doesn't matter because she can't move otherwise, and she can't jump very far. And Kirby can jump just as high if he needs to. And who the owl explodes. And that's the end of the level, so picnic time. And I will show off the rest of the curb cutter ability in the next level. I'm actually going to be going right on to that then, because we are getting in at a good pace here. So let's go! And Kirby's excited. And of course, as you can see, Cutter still does nothing underwater. I'm stuck as a fish, and there's nothing I can do. So this is one of the other game tropes in underwater levels, it's deep sea diving. Kirby 64 kind of does this, where its levels connected together don't necessarily have a lot of cohesiveness, but they kind of embody various versions of the trope of that world type. Like on Rockstar, we had a desert, we had ruins, we had um, an alien ship pyramid in the middle of the desert, which is kind of all rock-themed in a way. And in Aquastar, we had a coast side, we had a beach, we had uh, a river, and now we have deep sea diving, so it kind of embodies all the tropes, even if they're not tied together particularly well. So that's cool. I am gonna get... Okay, this is Nico the Cat, I think that's just his name. And he can... He can jump through the air and do somersaults, but again, like the others, not very useful. And I'm not getting the one I want, I'm just gonna skip it ahead to the one I want. Here we go, this is Pitch. He's like a little bird thing, he was in Kirby's Dream Land 3, and he is the most useful. You can't really see it underwater, but he can fly the farthest, and he's faster than Kirby, and the fact that he's invincible means that he's probably the most useful stone transformation in the game. This is debatable, but because he has air and speed and invincibility, he's just good, and now I can get rid of this ability and never use it again. Pitch is useful, but other than him, 
that ability is just kind of a waste of space. You never really need to climb walls, except, excuse me, except for, you know, swimming into spikes. You never need to climb walls except for that one crystal shard, and keep hard to the left here. Uh, you never need, aside from climbing walls, and all the other animal buddies outside of Pitch are useless, and then you just kind of need to cycle through them until you get him, and it's just not worth the time and effort that you saw me going through. And I'm sorry I didn't get rid of that quicker, that w or get to that quicker, because now I can just kind of fly through here. Because you're following a stream here, though, you don't necessarily have a lot of opportunity to be using power-ups, and that's kind of rough. However, you want to keep down as low as you can and get that crystal shard like that. This level has a lot of one-shot crystal shards, where if you don't get them the first time, you have to go back into the level or redo the room that you lost it in, and then get it there, and that's your only hope. And this is just dangerous swimming. Now, even though this area gives you cutter abilities, I wouldn't advise taking it because you can't swim without your face. You need your face in order to swim, otherwise you just kind of hang out along the ground. And here we have a mini boss, which you can see that they modeled the top half of these enemies, but then the bottom half is just kind of like a solid, uh, not a solid, but like a 2D sprite. And it's just, it doesn't look good. It doesn't look good at all. Why did they make it like that? That's silly. Oh well. You can also see how much effort went into modeling Kirby just by comparison to how everything else that's round in the game is really jagged if it's a 3D model. So the fact that Kirby is nearly completely round shows just how much processing power goes into keeping him at that shape. So, uh, good for you, development team. That's not sarcastic, by the way. Kirby does look great in this game, considering it's an N64 game, and N64 couldn't really do round shapes very well, and usually just elected to make 2D shapes. Now this part, of course, you may have guessed, there is another crystal shard, and that's why I'm kind of taking my pace, uh, taking my time here. If you swim too fast ahead anyway, you're probably going to get hit by boulders, and if you swim too slow, you're going to get, or, well, if you, get, if you swim too slow, you have a lot of time to think and stuff, but be careful not to swim into these boulders that are flying past you, because those will hurt. Goofball, you don't want to get hit by that, that'll hurt. And we are finishing up this level just like that. So that's not too bad. Let's see if we can't get ourselves that card. And we're just standing by Kurt, uh, King DDD, and he doesn't care. He's just gonna keep right on eating. Now this video is getting kinda long, but I do think we have time to do the boss of Aquastar. He is the hardest boss yet, but I think we can take him on and just finish up this whole level. It's Acro, the Orca. He's an Orca, in case that wasn't obvious. He spits stuff at you. This is by far the longest boss and also the most challenging, especially after Wispy Woods and Pix, who were just very unnotable. You spit things at him, but you kind of have to get the timing right, and he has a little bit of, I wouldn't say unpredictable patterns, but he is somewhat erratic and tricky to follow, especially since your movement in the water is slowed. This is one of the fights where having an ability going in is very useful and a little bit broken, admittedly, but you could say that for all the bosses, how an ability just makes them super easy. Because everything, almost everything, does like a flat sixth of their health. And we hit him again. That again would have given us Cutter, but I don't want to give us Cutter because we can't swim without our face. He swims forward into the background, and... No, he's gonna slam into us. And that knocks him down to a third of his health. We've nearly got him. Acro was actually in Kirby's Dream Land 3. He was the second boss of the game. But interestingly, he was on Popstar. So now he's on Aquastar. So I don't know. Maybe he came to Popstar with Dark Matter in Kirby's Dream Land 3. And this is his home. I don't know. But we explode the Orca. And he just kind of lies down for a nap. But he hits the ground so hard that... Underwater tremors happen, and the whole thing just starts falling apart. Thankfully, you don't have to worry about debris falling in from above here, even though it looks like you might have to. It's all in the background. Depth isn't your friend here for your eyes, but anyway. Just gotta keep swimming up this chef. Now, unlike Pix, who kind of broke the formula early on, earlier on, Acro follows the more traditional format, where he is a two-phase boss fight. 
and he swims from side to side below you, and you can get bombs here, but you can't swallow them is the thing. And, oh, that hurt. He'll swim up into the air, and he'll, not into the air, but he'll swim up, he'll dive back down, and he'll just spit stuff up at you. This phase, I find, is much easier than the first phase of the fight, because it's just easier to dodge him and hit him than it is in the first phase. Just, I don't know why, it's particularly. Maybe it's because Kirby has more options moving horizontally than he does vertically in the other section, and Acro just seems to cover a wider range of area in the previous area. But, I digress, this boss fight is okay, it's definitely more challenging, but now it's over. We nearly died. Whoa. Oh, and don't sink here, you can still sink and die, that would be really stupid. That would be really dumb. But we get the big crystal shard, and Kirby swims around in a little circle, and... He says hi. Hi, Kirby. Oh, Kirby nearly died and his friends nearly ditched him. That's just great. Actually, it is kind of funny how Kirby is the butt of the jokes of most of these uh, cutscenes, considering it's usually King DDD. But anyway, I think that will do for today's episode. We did a lot, actually. We did four le three levels. Four? Three levels and a boss. That was That's good. That is sufficient, and I think that will do for this level and everything. So, in the next episode, we're gonna start on level four, Neostar. I'm Mr. Debius, or just Deeb, and I hope to see somebody in the next one. Bye bye